what it is, what's up, got a miraculous decade saving video in the cut. Actually, the video doesn't even matter. It's about what we're talking about in the video. Apparently, I'm just doing my rounds, you know, post nut clarity, taking in some of the breeze. I go on Twitter, check the timeline. First thing, I see this chick being an annoying B word. We're gonna keep this PG B word on the timeline. And I just saw she made a Twitter private. So not only people get to be tormented by her trash, is the people who follow her already. I'm wondering now why am I part of that camp of tormented individuals have to see her constant ramblings. But then I scroll down a little bit more. And I see this this tweet by the Hollywood Reporter. And I pull it up right now. I'm going to read it. I could just have it on the screen for you to see it. But you don't deserve to see it. Only I deserve to see it. Sets Bob Alm is warming up his guitars for a possible comeback. Netflix and UCP, the division behind hashtag the Umbrella Academy and hashtag Chucky, are developing a brand new adaptation of hashtag Scott Pilgrim colon the link. A link goes to this article. It says Brian Lee O'Malley, who originally did the little doodlings, and Ben David Grabinski, I don't know who that is, will write and executive produce the series. I was, I was 11 years old, I believe it was about, I want to say September 17th, when Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the movie came out. I doubt it comes to 2022, but it just got green lighted, or green lit. But let's say it comes out this time next year, 2023. 13 years later, as a grown ass man, who who's not in school anymore, who's looking at work, all this other external nonsense. And we find the secret we always wanted. It went from niche with a bunch of, you know, uh, random ass characters of Michael Sarah to and Macaulay Culkin's little brother to cult classic. You have the Arby Plaza to work in a little more clout. Chris Evans, Captain America. Uh, I don't know if Mary Elizabeth Winstead did anything about like the mid 2010s, but they've always got to kind of matter a little bit more. And then you get like this universe of fuckers that love uh, Scott Pilgrim now. Oh my god, dude. You get the Netflix um, licensing and just blew it up. I think it's off Netflix now. But um, it also goes on to say the band members from the 2010 movie are also on hand for the anime. So the dudes who did, I guess, the backdrop for that uh, like production for um, the Black Sheep song, the Brie Larson, Brie Larson uh, I don't know, covered, I suppose, or I don't know if she wrote the lyrics for that, but Brie Larson, you know, everybody loves that. She backdrop for that. And this is a, it's an old comic. The comic was published between 2004 2010, and also it's almost damn near impossible to find those comics without paint an arm and a leg. Um, and keep in mind that the uh, the script for the movie was like entirely done by Edgar Wright, the GOAT. And uh, this, who's this Bacall dude? Um, Michael Bacall, who is a, produ a pr producer? Oh, he's a producer. Okay, so yeah. So I guess Wright and Bacall again, like executive producer credits for this. I don't know why, but maybe they'll have a leg into it too. But the the comic, what a lot of people don't like, uh, really stems to um, stems from Michael Sarah because Michael Sarah and Edgar Wright's interpretation of that movie goes an entirely different direction than it, for some people than what the character did in the comics. 
a lot of people kind of feel like it's grounded the rest of the cast for the most part in what the, the comic kind of was. Obviously, you're not going to get a one-on-one because why would you, like, to me, I don't know why you'd even consume another piece of media if it was one-on-one exactly. Because somewhere, either it's going to outdo the other piece and you're going to just forget about that or, you know, so it's, it's just something that gets thrown off there. But this was Edgar's interpretation of it. And Michael Sarah is not exactly one-on-one with Scott Pilgrim. This, an actual anime, uh, would presumably allow to be a little more faithful to what Edgar Wright did. I mean, not Edgar Wright, but... um. I just forgot his name, Louis says his name, Tim uh, O'Malley, yeah, guy from Canada. Um, so going from there, I, I, I want to look at the studio before I close out here. It says it's done by Anime House Science Saru. So, let's see what that's about. Type the name, I didn't see anything pop up except Scott Pilgrim, so I don't think they do anything massive, but we'll just check it out. Scoring from Japanese anime, by the way. They did the Food Shade episode of Adventure Time. They did Uno, the Heike story, and the Star Wars Visions. That's like a Disney Plus thing, if I remember correctly. I didn't get to watch that, but that is, uh, that is something. Else. So they, they, they try to, I guess, spin towards, like, pretty much, like, working on actual normal American, like, pieces of like work like film or media and i guess it kind of just put their own spin onto it that's interesting that their first release ever was that food chain episode the uh adventure time series do i remember that i don't i really don't know how i remember that let's let's check it out i'll link it in the description if you want to go like with the wikipedia i guess I wonder if this is the one, based on what I'm seeing in this bio, this is the one that I guess, like, they have, like, a, they start, like, a very, like, minuscule, like, almost single cellular level, and they kind of build up over this, like, whole extended period. Um, I think I know this one, but I can't say for certain. I'm trying to, like, remember talking, because it's 2014, like, I was watching Adventure Time OD back then, but I don't recall it precisely. Anyway... If you want to see some of the, like, literally their first work, go watch Food Chain by, uh, or, or Food Chain from American Time, <laughs> American Time, Adventure Time, uh, that's their first piece of work, or see Star Wars Vision, which I think was actually pretty heralded. Uh, I remember that being like, hey, that was Star Wars anime now. I remember that being heralded quite a bit, uh, off the strength of that. I never watched it because my Disney Plus aspired, but, uh, yeah, I remember getting quite a bit of acclaim. Uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna let her rock. I just wanted to really get a video out for this. I think this is needed. I mean, I think there's so much more meat on the bone with this with this uh, universe. I mean, I know that, like, it's a linear story that has been completed. It has been completed for a decade. But I, I just think it's so well-written characters that, I mean, you could go it a thousand different ways interpretation-wise. Like, this whole quirky, you know, guy who, who works well with comic-style franchises and, and does his thing with um uh you know a, a blank canvas almost uh with source material and kind of built off of that edgar wright did his thing with what he did with that but i mean i think you could easily go in an entirely different direction with this like not entirely because you want to keep it canonical or you know faithful to the material but i think a good good uh good anime studio could definitely take this a different uh different work they wanted to and then hell, I mean, there's spinoffs you can do. Like, uh, I, 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 am I, am I, I may be uh, tripping, but I seem to think that there was some piece of, of media that covered them after the whole Evil Exes. And I know that uh, Adult Swim did a piece, like a little short of what happened, or like a little, little short of uh, Scott Pilgrim before the Evil Exes happened. Uh, when he was with Kim, so you could just do that. I mean, just like, <laughs> I mean, that, that's like literally, you can go in all these different directions with this. Like, I, I even just a, like the evil lessons themselves. Like, I feel like a lot of people love evil lessons. Like, I don't think that this anime studio could afford Chris Evans, that uh, Indian dude is really cool. Um, I know that uh, Gideon, he does a lot of like kind of niche film stuff. 
Uh, they probably can afford all that cash, but like, it's kind of like with with the uh, the Avengers game, like your idea of what these characters sound like is just breaking the most successful rendition of these characters. If someone does it better, like I think they're getting Michael Sarah next. They have to get Michael Sarah. Like I, I don't know if you can do Scott Pilgrim without Michael Sarah. I don't know if you can do Ramona without uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I, I'm just gonna keep it a buck with you. I think you could replace everybody else with diminishing results, but I don't think you could. I mean, literally, Michael, what is Michael Sarah doing? Like, what was, <laughs> Mary Elizabeth Mary Elizabeth Winstead? She was in um, I think she did another Edgar Wright film where that was. No, last night in Soho, that was something else. But she was in another film on Netflix uh, about a couple months ago. But Michael Cera, I don't... What the hell is he doing? Like, I, anyway, um, that's it. I hope they get Michael Cera and Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I don't care about anybody else, but I'm just happy we have this. And uh, the, the screenshot is going to be of this guy who, I guess, has his dad tell him, like, this is the worst thing you wanted me to see or whatever. I, I had to go with my mom because I think it was like a, uh, I think it was a mature movie if I remember correctly. Um, or at least it was too old for me to watch. Like I said, I was like 11. And my mom, like, I think my mom was asleep with that movie, bro. Like, she did not know what the hell was happening. But I'm glad she took it because that was, if I never had that, that, that movie in my life, I think my whole life would be different. Like, I think it'd literally be like the timeline in uh, Endgame where you have like this dark world that happens if you take the time stone out and you fuck some shit up. That would be my life if he took Scott Pilgrim out of my life. I don't know what would have happened. I really don't. 